All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, I hope you're all safe out there and doing well. Um, yeah, today we're going to be talking about some of the evidence that there is for life on Mars. So, uh, without further ado, let's start today's material. All right, here's a question for you. So please go ahead and push pause and think about this for a moment on your own. All right, so um, the evidence that life exists on Mars um, it comes in uh, one of three main categories. So uh, one of those categories is tests of the Martian soil done by the Viking landers. So this um, is the first of the three main categories. There were four experiments on the Viking landers. And we'll go into detail in just a moment on what those four experiments were. The second main category that people refer to is that methane is detected in the Martian atmosphere. So not oxygen, like I said in the question above. And the third main category of evidence are Martian meteorites. And we'll talk about one of those in particular. These have evidence for life. And I'll put that in quotes because that may be evidence for life, as we'll see it may not be. Um, we have never received unknown radio signals from Mars. Um, so B is the best answer here. All right, moving on. Let's look at some detail on these Viking experiments. And again, there's four experiments, and you can see them listed below. Carbon assimilation experiment, gas exchange, um, labeled release, and gas chromatog chromatography. So um, you don't need to know a lot of the details of these experiments. Um, just the main takeaway, these first three here, they were all looking for evidence of uh, metabolism in the soils. So they um, uh, basically were looking at whether or not there were metabolic, metabolic processes in the soils that would uptake carbon. Um, they put in a nutrient broth to see what would happen. They did one with the nutrient broth marked with radioactive nutrient or radioactivity, radioactive elements, so that they could see if those radioactive elements were uptake um, by some sort of life form. And those all had promising results. They seem to indicate that um, life was present, um, that there was at least some sort of metabolic processes going on. Now, this last experiment here, this third one, um, looked for large organic molecules, um, or at least organic molecules in the surface, um, basically, remember that life is made up of organic molecules. And, well, they didn't find anything. So no organics equals no life. And so we have a problem here. We have between here and here, we have conflicting results. So it seemed like the first three experiments found evidence of life. The third one said, or the fourth one said there was no life. Um, some resolution to this may be from the Phoenix and Curiosity uh, landers that came along later, and they found that there's these things called perchlorates. Um, we mentioned that before, um, that these are salts, 
It turns out that when you heat these things up, a lot of their experiments involved heating the Martian soil. Uh, these perchlorates release oxygen, which could have destroyed the organics they're looking for. So basically, the big takeaway here is so that we have inconclusive results. And even some of these top experiments up here, they can be explained through um, non-biological processes. So even though they could have indicated that life was happening, um, there are other just physical processes that could um, show those same results. So basically all this stuff is inconclusive, um, showing no definitive evidence one way or the other for life. Now let's look at the next uh, set of experiments for the next main category here. This is that there's methane detected in the atmosphere of Mars. Um, now the problem with this is if we have the Martian surface here, we have some methane, CH4, and out here is space. Well, we're going to be continually losing methane. Um, remember we talked about those loss processes, how Mars is losing its atmosphere through solar wind and whatnot. Um, yet even though we're losing the methane, it was detected from Earth and in situ by Mars Express, one of those orbiters that we mentioned before. So the big question here is if we're losing methane, there must be something com continuously resupplying it. So where is the methane coming from? That's our big question here. So one possibility is that there's life producing it. Um, Many of you know that cows produce methane um, in the process of digesting grass. So there are many uh, biologic processes that can produce methane. We've also talked here about volcanoes, um, basically geologic processes that can produce methane. That's one of the big outputs from volcanoes and also from uh hydrothermal vents, that sort of thing. And the last one here could be comets. They contain lots of methane as well, uh, methane ices. And so if they crashed in, they could um, supply this methane. Now, one thing we notice is that there is seasonal variability. So as the seasons change, the amount of methane goes up and down in the atmosphere. That really suggests one of these two. So seasonal variability um, suggests life or geology being responsible for uh, this process. So if it's one of these two, um, well, if it's life, well, that's good evidence for life. And it turns out that if it's volcanoes, that may um, point to life as well. So one piece of this, uh, the last piece, is that if it is geologic in origin, then it means, then it means there is enough heat for liquid water to exist somewhere and potentially life. So um, we've talked about how Mars is relatively geologically dead compared to the Earth. Uh, it doesn't have plate tectonics. There are no, um, uh, yeah, that the core is frozen, so there's no large-scale magnetic field. Um, but if there's methane coming out, large amounts of methane coming out of the surface, uh, it does indicate that there is still quite a bit of heat left under there, and that heat could both provide energy for liquid water and energy for life. So that could also be evidence that there's life. Again, the big takeaway from this is that it's in... Con, let me rewrite that. Inconclusive is what I'm trying to say. 
is it this is not good uh, strong evidence for life in either way or lack of life so again our second main category here um, may suggest that there's life but it's inconclusive we need more study now so both of these previous categories have turned out to be very inconclusive, so what we really need is a sample return. We need to get a sample of Mars, uh, Martian soil, Martian rocks, uh, into the hands of people so that we can study these things. So um, we could do a sample return mission. Those are uh, expensive. You need to fly a craft all the way to Mars and one all the way back. Uh, another option would be sending humans to Mars. Now, I want you to stop and think a little bit about what are the pros and cons of sending humans to Mars. So, again, go ahead and push pause and write down your best answer for about two or three minutes. All right. Now that you have that written down, I'll go ahead and list out what I think the pros or cons are for the pros. There's really one main big pro, and this is scientific payoff would be huge. Humans can go all over the place. They can change their experiments on the fly. Um, we can drive around. We could do um, sampling in different locations. So compared to rovers or spacecraft, which have... Um, are extremely capable but very limited in what they can do and also they're not very good at thinking on their feet um, the science payoff would just be uh, immeasurable however there are a lot of cons uh, one is that it's more expensive we've talked about this before in terms of manned missions it's dangerous um, it's a long journey through space with a harsh radiation environment. Uh, you'd be on a planet that's very inhospitable. Um, so yeah, dangerous to humans. Now the last one here we haven't talked about much, and this is contamination. Um, this would be both contamination of Mars, bringing bacteria. You know, humans are covered in billions of bacteria. And if we send humans to Mars, we will be spreading those things all over the Martian surface. The also um, is if there is life on Mars, we may contaminate Earth as those uh, astronauts come back. I assume it wouldn't be a one-way mission and they wouldn't be there forever. And so this cross-contamination either of Mars or of Earth um, would be potentially disastrous. I mean, it could lead to... Um, a pandemic. We've all seen how bad that can be. Um, as far as science goes, it would definitely complicate our quest to answer the question, is there life on Mars? Did it originate there independently? Um, is there some common source of life for Earth and Mars? Remember our panspermia theory? So yeah, this contamination is a huge issue. Um, big enough issue that NASA goes through a uh, considerable lengths to sterilize their spacecraft if there's any chance of it landing on um, somewhere where life could survive. So a, a big issue that we hadn't really talked about yet this semester. All right, moving on to the next question. Um, which of the following, so we're talking about sample return missions, which of these different uh, methods have actually brought a sample of Mars back to Earth. So again, please push pause and think about this for a few moments. All right, now that you've had time to think about that, it turns out that there was a meteor impact on Mars some 16 million years ago, and this delivered... Oops, my spelling is not so great today. Delivered a Martian meteorite to Earth. Okay, and we was found it 
in 1986. So we'll have some more details on that coming up soon. Again, this is our third main category of evidence that life exists on Mars, and that's these Martian meteorites. So here's a couple pictures of it. Uh, you can see down here, it's a little hard to read, but this is one cubic centimeter right here. So you can get a scale for this thing. It's pretty small, just a few inches by a few inches. Uh, another picture up here um, is a close-up. So this is magnified many times. I don't know exactly the scale, but what I want you to see is this structure right here that looks a little bit like a bacteria. So uh, that's one of the pieces of evidence from this Martian meteorite that suggests there may be life there. Um, let me see here, what would we like to point out? Um, down here, this formed about four billion years ago, we think. So it formed at a time when Mars was likely very very wet. So, um, and that was about 4.1 billion years ago, as you can see down in the table. Um, now it was, uh, blasted off. You can see right here, 16 million years ago, it was blasted off into space by an impact on Mars. So a meteor hit Mars, knocked a chunk off into space. And this is fairly common. We have meteorites from the moon. We have other meteorites from Mars. We, I believe, have meteorites from Venus. We get different chunks of planets that have been blasted off and circling around. Now, it didn't come directly to Earth. As you can see here, it didn't fall to Earth until about 13,000 years ago, and it fell down into Antarctica. Now, a lot of meteorites are found down in Antarctica. This is because of the Antarctic ice sheet. Um, when the meteorites fall down, they're sometimes sitting on a few miles of ice. And when you find a rock on top of a mile of ice, um, it's a pretty good indication that it came from above, not below. So there's um, missions every year to go down to Antarctica and search for meteorites. If that's something you're into, you could always volunteer um, to do that. They're always looking for volunteers to go down and live for a few months. Um, sometimes they want you to have geology background, sometimes not. So it, it circled around the solar system for roughly 16 million years, finally landed in Antarctica uh, about 13,000 years ago. And we found it in 1986, and we've been studying it ever since. Um, and it was recognized in 1993 as a Martian meteorite, and it wasn't until 1996 that um, possible evidence of Martian life was found. So let's look at what some of that evidence is, other than the small structure you can see in the top image here. So there's really four things here. The first one are these layered carbonate grains. So what you end up with is like a calcium rich layer and then an iron rich layers and magnesium rich layers, etc., etc. And we think that uh, at least here on Earth, those types of structures are often made um, by biologic activity. Uh, another piece of evidence are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, uh, typically just referred to as PAAHs, and these are very large organic molecules. 
And we actually find them here on Earth. They're common in your barbecue. That contributes to some of that smell uh, in your barbecue, that sort of carbony, uh, rich carbony smell. Those are PAHs. Uh, they're often um, formed, again, through biologic processes, through uh, biologic organic decay. Um, our third piece of evidence are crystals in here. And these are not large like quartz crystals. They're small hematite grains. Remember we talked about hematite being um, found on Mars. This is a um, hydrated iron mineral. So there are um, many non-biologic ways to make these. It was really the morphology, the shapes of the crystals looked like crystals that earth bacteria make. Um, so that was one piece. The last piece here are the rod-shaped structures that resembled fossilized bacteria. And that's the um, thing that I pointed out in the top image uh, on the previous slide. And so those looked uh, pretty much just like bacteria or certain types of bacteria. So let's look at these. It turns out, so there's ways to refute um, all of these, basically for all of the first three, there are non-biologic ways to make these. Um, There are um, abiotic ways to make all of the things, the uh, layered carbonates, the PAHs, and even the crystals. Um, yeah, so even though they could be biologic in origin, they don't necessarily have to be. Um, the problem with the uh, bacteria-looking structures is that um, these are significantly smaller than bacteria, and they may even be too small to contain RNA and DNA. So again, and from what I've read on this, is that there are, again, non-biologic processes that can produce similar structures uh, here on Earth. So, and we've also seen them in other meteorites. Again, the final takeaway from the Martian meteorite is that the results are inconclusive. So there are both biologic and non-biologic ways to make um, all of these things. So I guess the main takeaway from all of these three main categories is that while they may indicate that there's life on Mars, and they all suggest that there are non-biologic explanations for all three of the main categories. And so really what we need is more study. And this is part of the reason there are so many upcoming missions planned to go to Mars. That's the reason there's so many missions currently at Mars is because we just need to do a lot more digging, both uh, figuratively and literally, in order to figure out if there is life or was life on Mars. So that's all I have for you today. Um, please stay safe and healthy out there. And um, I'm still working on getting the exams graded. I'm hoping to finish those up this week. So if yours hasn't been graded yet, please be patient. Um, hopefully it will get done soon. So thank you and have a great day.